This is the greatest grind by weight flat burr grinder that grinds directly into a portafilter under a thousand dollars in the world. Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Joe, where I help you make better coffee and give you honest reviews. Today, I have a coffee grinder I've been very excited for the release of. It's kind of con under the radar, but I've been very excited for it because I really like to have on my bench a grind by weight grinder. Unfortunately, there isn't any flat burr grind by weight coffee grinders under a thousand dollars that can grind by weight directly into a portafilter. So with that said, let me say that this is the greatest grind by weight flat burr grinder that grinds directly into a portafilter under a thousand dollars in the world. So uh, <laughs> it's because it's the only one. So um, I've been using this for a little while now and I've been enjoying it. It's a pretty good uh, grinder. It's, um, it's been, you know, an enjoyable experience, but I want to kind of give you the pros and cons and tell you exactly why I enjoy it and who it's maybe for. So first up, the screen is almost identical to the uh, Eureka Mignon, which I reviewed a, a while back, maybe almost a year now. Um, but the screen's almost identical. The only difference is that instead of this being a time, so the plus or minus buttons being a time, you're actually um, gonna have a weight uh, situation here. So the plus and minus buttons are gonna control how many grams uh, you're gonna get out of coffee on this machine. Now, um, it works pretty well with that. I will say uh, there are some pitfalls that I'll talk about later, but overall I, I do like that uh, experience on it. Uh, I do like the build construction. It's exactly like a Eureka Mignon. If you were to put a Eureka Mignon right here, I don't think you'd actually be able to tell the difference. The only difference maybe would be this fork here, which the fork on the Eureka Mignon is slightly different. Um, but other than that, the build quality, everything is you know, virtually the same. I even think that the, uh, the turn knob here is about the same. I will say though, I you know maybe the model that I reviewed, the Mignon I reviewed a while back, uh, it seemed to get a little bit more clumping than this model. Now maybe they've updated the burrs, maybe they've upgraded the um, the you know distribution um, outlet on the on, right at the top there. But I don't know. I've actually had a better experience with this one than I did with that other one. Also, that one uh, was a little finicky with uh, how many you know, grams of coffee you get out with the timer. Um, it kind of worked better as a single doser, but it's, it was just kind of a difficult thing to do because to me, I really just don't think that we should be doing time-based grinds anymore unless it's hyperactive, act, or I should, act, I should say accurate, um, because it just, it's more of a nuisance because when you're grinding by weight, more times than often, you're gonna have a, a pretty big jump between your your weights. So maybe the first time you do do it, especially once this uh, grinder is full, there's more weight pushing all that coffee down. Um, so you're gonna have maybe a little bit more uh, coffee in the portafilter than you would at the end when you have a smaller amount of coffee left. So that's just kind of some things why I you know really prefer this uh, method. It just takes a couple of steps out. It's a little bit easier. It's a very fast workflow if you're having guests over. So I enjoy that. Um, the other thing I really like about the Eureka uh, Mignon uh, is not just the build quality, but it's also the design. I think it's attractive, handsome. It's a nice looking machine. You got that um, you know matte black metal, feels great. And then you also have uh, kind of this shiny mirrored chrome. Uh, that's also not plastic. It's also metal. So uh, that you know is another really nice feature that I think goes a long way 
with uh, kind of the aesthetics and your daily use of it. When something looks good, it's a little bit more enjoyable to use. At least that's my experience. All right, the last pro I'm gonna talk about is this fork. I didn't mention it briefly, but um, in, in terms of like the usability, I really enjoy this. You could easily turn the knob at the bottom there. You could adjust it up and down and it easily fits even with a uh, you know, portafilter funnel on there, which I do recommend, especially on this grinder. You can go right to the top there and then tighten it up and you're good to go. Uh, and then you could also jump that out, use that. And let's see if it fits, probably doesn't. And it doesn't, but you could easily quickly do that. Go ahead and push it up and then tighten it down and you're good to go. And it fits and it feels good. Um, I haven't had it slide too much while I'm using it, so overall it's pretty good. I do wish they would have, they have rubber on the bottom here, but they don't have rubber on any of these uh, feet here, so that would have been nice to add just so you have a little bit more of a firm catch. But other than that, it's been a pretty good experience. So let me jump over to the cons. Well, let's start with cons here. So there's not a lot to be said with the uh, Eureka Libra, but I think Eureka does have a little bit of growing pains that they have to work through on this machine. Um, the first thing uh, being, I, I don't think it's they're thinking about the consumer enough because some of the things I've even noticed as somebody who's used a lot of these machines uh, get a little confused with. So first off, I'm gonna turn this machine on. For some reason, a 3-1 comes up. I Unless I go into the manual, I really don't know what that means. Um, I'll talk about that later, but it's a little complicated. And then um, it, you would think, you know, you go ahead, you put your port of filter in here, you hit the button, and it would start to grind. But as you can see, I'm getting an error there, and it says FH. Again, I don't really know what that means. Um, unless I go into the user manual. So luckily I'm here to help you, but <laughs> uh, so you don't have to go into the user manual, but uh, the thing that you have to do is you have to actually hit, F, hit your cup button or one of the brew buttons, whether it's a single or double. I do it a couple of times, like three, you know, two or three times before I uh, try to actually put my port filter in there. But what this is doing is it's actually Tarring itself, so it's saying, okay, this is what I weigh with nothing in it. All right, so while it's grinding, it kind of leads me to my second point here. If you hit the grind button, it'll start to grind, and then to pause it, you have to hit that button again. It's not the most complicated thing, but it would be nice if it had like a pause and play. And then this does time out as well, so if you leave that in there, um, it times out, and then if you take it off and you move it around, it, you're, you're screwed. It's gonna immediately cancel it because the weight changed. So that's one thing that I really get annoyed with because if this is just a little off axis, not now I have noticed that it's, it doesn't really fall out that much, but let's say it is falling out like that and you're worried that it's gonna fall, you can't hit pause and readjust this to push it back up or get it in another position. So I think that's one area where Eureka should maybe try to figure out a better method for that. Just pausing to pause generally never happens. I've, I've found normally I'm gonna hit pause so that I can make an adjustment here because I think maybe it's gonna fall or maybe you know I didn't put a portafilter funnel on it or something like that. So I think they could have done a little bit better of a job there. The last thing I don't like about this grinder and it's a very small thing is this uh, bean hopper. I, it's not bad, um, it just is plastic like a lot of them. It's thicker plastic, so it is better, but man, I just, I, I don't know, I know none of these coffee companies like make a nice, sturdy glass uh, version of this, because to me, it just would make it feel a lot better. And then the other thing I, I'm not a huge fan of, I'm sure it'll wear in, but this is, it takes kind of a bit of force to get this off, um, which is good in some ways, because you know it's got a good seal, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a pain to get it off, and I'm nervous that I'm gonna pull this thing up um, you can negate that by screwing the screw in in the back, but um, other than that, uh, that's where there's really no way of avoiding kind of tugging on it. So that's it for the cons. I honestly like this machine a whole heck of a lot. I think it is going to be my mainstay on my bench, on my coffee bar, 
So uh, there is that. So I think this, it's, if that tells you anything, you can, you can know that it is a very good grinder. I've gone through lots of different grinders before, and this is my new favorite. So let's go ahead and make a shot with it. We are at the bench, the espresso bar. Uh, let's go ahead and make a shot. So I have a nice cleaned out porta filter. I just cleaned it out before I got up here. Let me just get some of the little stuff out there. And then I am going to check the difference. So I'm gonna see how much actually comes out. That's kind of one of the issues I, I've noticed with this is it doesn't really tell you at the end what you've got. It just says 16 after it's done um, you know, grinding out. So let's see what the Libra shows up with. So I'm gonna tar this in here and then I'm gonna see what this pulls out. All right, so that was one thing too, is it, it showed like 16.5 there at the end, and it does that a lot, so I'm interested to see how close it really is to 16. Oh, that's exactly, 15.9 grams, I'll give it. That's, uh, that's great. And I have gone back and forth. It does seem when I've done that test before, it's only about 0.1 to 0.3, but it's, I just wish it would show up at the end on this uh, scale on here, it like would pause so you could see it. Uh, kind of like how the sete does. So let me go ahead and tap it up. We'll distribute. Now I am shooting for about a uh, one to two ratio, one to maybe 2.5. So this is 16 grams. So we're gonna be looking for like 32 to maybe 40 in about 28 to 30 seconds. So um, that should be pretty good. I have a nice, distributed shot. Go ahead and do that. Now, uh, in the past, I have mentioned when I do coffee grinder reviews, I don't WDT. I think, um, I, I, I don't think that that's something that you shouldn't do, but I think for a coffee grinder, it's nice to know how good it is without doing that. Uh, because some coffee grinders can actually give you fluffy enough grinds that you don't need to uh, do WDT. So let me go ahead and put my Normcore little filter on top. Get my scale underneath here. Tar it in. And I'm gonna go ahead and what I do is I shoot for about uh, two bars of pressure, pre-infuse until I see the bloom at the bottom. And then I ramp it up to nine bars. And then sometimes I slow it down uh, with about 20 seconds left. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, two bars. Getting some drips. And let's ramp that pressure up. Beautiful shot, and that ramped up at perfect timing. I normally like to ramp it up somewhere between eight and about 11, 12 seconds. We're getting some good time here. I'm gonna start slowing it down. And boom, 36 in 28 seconds. So this is a very good shot. Let me go ahead and give it a stir. And let's give it the taste test. Now I do have a Monarch by Onyx Coffee in my hopper right now. It is a beautiful coffee. I will do a full review of it. I've been enjoying it every morning though. Very nice. This coffee has like beautiful chocolate notes um, and it just has this jammy finish. It's such a distinct like blueberry rat, like a, a kind of a, a preserves of sorts. Um, you know, raspberry, blueberry, blackberry, some type of berry, like deep dark uh, berry. And it is really, really good. Yeah, it doesn't disappoint. So as you could tell, uh, the Libra really performs super nicely. It's a relatively fast grinder. It's super, super quiet. If I didn't mention that in the pros, I'm mentioning it now. 
Uh, it's the same as the Mignon, which is also super quiet, but that is one of the nicest things about this grinder. It's really only at like the 60, 70 decibel range, whereas, you know, my sete is at like 95, 98 decibels, especially if you're close to it. So that grinder is super quiet. It's super nice. You don't, your workflow is just so much faster when you don't have to sit there with a scale, what, you know, measure out your coffee, put it in a coffee grinder, let it do its thing and then pump it out and, and do all that stuff. It just makes for a quicker, more relaxed kind of morning espresso, especially if you're making for like three, four or five people at a time. So last little sip here, cause I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, knocks it out of the park. It's exactly what this coffee is meant to taste like. And that's in my, I guess my opinion, but it tastes really, really good. Uh, it's not super bright. It has, it's very balanced. It's just so good. So that's my review of the Libra. Uh, to give it a final score, I'm going to give it a pretty high one because I am very partial to grind by weight coffee grinders. I'm going to give this like a, I'm going to give it a 9.3. Like the only thing they could be doing better is fix some of those things I mentioned earlier getting like kind of the interface dialed in a little bit better for this type of situation. And then um, I think that they could also maybe make it slightly faster or use like 64 millimeter burr set, a little bit more standard. Uh, that way you could put SSP burrs in it. But other than that, it's an amazing coffee grinder. So I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you.